Hey guys, are you ready for another awesome fusion video? Today, we're gonna take this and turn it into this, and then we're gonna add some effects to make some really great spinning animated rings, and there's a kind of a lot of things you can do with this. What uh, magic node am I using to create the rings? Also, do you know where these images came from? If you're a fusion user, you might have a good idea. Well, we can transport ourselves to distant planets. Actually, this was kind of the inspiration for the idea. Do you guys know the movie? Or uh, maybe we can open a dimensional portal, um, drop ourselves in, and talk to aliens. If we remove the background, maybe we can create some spells. Superhero stuff? Or we can fight the forces of evil. Do you guys know any of these movies? If so, let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure that you like, subscribe, and uh, check out all of my videos for a lot of great information about DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, creating animations, and having a lot of fun. And also, like this video. I really, really appreciate it, and uh, it does help the channel. Everyone says it, but it's true. I also wanted to take a really quick survey to see um, how you guys are using AI. Um, I've been doing a lot of research, a lot of investigations to, to how we can all use AI to edit faster, more efficiently, uh, create animations, and do lots of things. And I think there's some really interesting possibilities to how to use these new tools to really help us create better videos faster and easier. Not with the AI doing all the work, but using AI as a tool um, that's a resource to help you get things done. I'm going to be making a video very soon, so you'll see what all I've been up to. Okay, here we go. Let's take this flat image turn it into a ring and then spin it around. Okay, it's ring time. So we have a blank fusion composition here and we're gonna start by putting in our image and then I'm gonna show you how we get the, uh, turn that flat image into a ring. So uh, we're gonna take this icons PNG and drag it in to the node area, hit F2 and you'll see that's what it looks like. So this is uh, basically, if you recognize it, this is our fusion toolbar right down below. Um, this was the inspiration. So what I actually kind of took a screenshot it with it and tried to upscale it a little bit to get a little more detail. Now we're going to take a background node and slide that into the node area, connect that up to media out. And now we're going to start playing around with the, uh, the toolbar there. First thing we're going to do is if you hadn't guessed it, this is going to use some 3d to do it. It's not going to just a little bit, but the, uh, the 3d tools make it really easy to do. So we're going to take this, this icon here. This is a uh, 3d plane. I'm going to put it in here and take the media in, which is our toolbar image, and put it into the image plane right there. Let's put that in the viewer. And we're in 3D. You can hit the middle mouse button and kind of go around here. You can kind of scroll in and out, move around. So how do we get this into the ring? Very simple. All we're going to do is, with the image plane selected, hit Control Space and search for Bender. And this is the Bender node, and this is going to do the magic for us. So you, there's all sorts of tools in, there's all sorts of options in the bender node to bend it, twist it, bend it, twist it, flip it, flip it or whatever. All right, let's click the bender node and hit two to put it into the viewer. So let's take a look at what you can do with it. Um, this will spin it. You see it's doing a little bit here, but we want to spin it in the, on the X axis. So let's click X and now we can take this amount here and we're bending that image. And we can zoom in and guess what? It doesn't look really great. It doesn't look like a ring. The reason for this is because we need more subdivisions. So let's go to the uh, subdivisions. Let's click the image plane and right here you can see subdivisions. And this, this basically gets you a higher precision with the uh, the 3D shape. Um, you see right there we got uh, five. We just kind of crank it all the way up to 40 and we got a nice looking ring right there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a transform node after the bender. So hit so with bender selected, hit control space and search for transform. Find the transform 3D and hit enter and put that in the viewer. Now, one, to get this to work, we need to actually, you notice that the center of the ring is kind of up on the top. So the transform, hit control space, and we're going to search for a duplicate. So we're going to be using a duplicate 3D right there. We're going to put that in the viewer. We're going to make some copies, and then we're going to scale this up. And you see how all our copies are scaled? Everything is off of this reference point right on the top. So you see they're all scaled down. What we want to do is use this transform node, and we're just going to take the y-axis and move it up right into the center. The, uh, the duplicate in there, make it a little bit bigger so we can see the spacing between those shapes right there. Go to the transform and then we're going to basically just move this y-axis up to where they're just all about even. Let's go ahead and take this and we're going to merge it right into background one so we can see what it looks like. Actually, we need the uh, render. Hit control space and search for render 3D and we'll take the output of the render and then merge that into the background. And you'll be able to see this a little bit better right here. When we adjusted the y-axis on this transform, it was down here like this, and we're gonna bring them all up so they're all kind of centered. And just kind of eyeball it to get about even spacing there. And we go to the duplicate, and this is where we can adjust. Let's go back, go to one viewer here, make it a little bit bigger. 
And we can adjust the scale to create some interesting effects like that. Well, you can actually play around with a lot of these different options. It's going to go with about too many. Let's bring it down the number of copies. So now that we have this done, the next, the next thing we want to do is be able to spin it, flip it, and do some different animations. So actually, you'll notice that we have these translation options. These create some interesting animations to kind of show you some of the things we can do. And you can actually combine these. So the X and Y, and then we can do the Z offset. Creates a really kind of a zoom through kind of a look. And actually, that's really similar to the scale. So if we adjust the scale, it's kind of a zoom through look as well. And then the rotation. This is where we can start having some fun. You can see these rings rotate around each other like that. That's X, Y rotation. And we're going to combine these to create a really cool effect. And then there's some Z rotation. Look how we're, they're actually spinning. To create this more random, to create a really cool look, what we're going to do is going to go over to Jitter. And what Jitter does is it takes each of the copies and applies a slightly different transformation to them. So you'll see that if we do the translation jitter, we can move the X, they all kind of move in a different direction. And to do the rotation, we're just going to do the rotate X and Y. And so let's go, and we're going to keyframe this. So let's go to the, uh, the first frame, and we'll keyframe the X and Y, and we'll move over to about uh, frame 40, and we'll put, those, put these to like 360. And that's going to spin them all around. So let's just keep this going. We're going to go to the spline editor, Find X and Y, going to hit uh, select all right there. Going to select both, actually it's, we want the X too. Um, we're going to select these keyframes and we're going to hit this set relative option. And that's just going to keep them spinning. Okay, so we have this up and the, what we can do is we're going on the first frame here and this is our animation and we're going to rotate the Z. And what that's going to cause is it's going to cause these rings to kind of spin in uh, kind of some crazy directions, different stuff here. So. Let's go, uh, we'll put it here. We'll just uh, keyframe the first frame. We'll go over a little bit uh, right in here and we're just gonna adjust the rotation. So they're gonna be spinning, twisting, flipping, all kinds of stuff. That's the basics of the, uh, the spinning rings. Now we're gonna apply some effects to create some of those other things that I showed you. We need to isolate this white part and we're gonna get rid of the gray background and that's gonna allow us to apply some effects. Um, to those little image pieces. So to do this, we're going to use a bitmap node. So click in the node area, hit control space and search for bitmap. And we're going to take the output of the media in and we're going to put that right into this bitmap here. All right, so really it's just white. And so we need to change the mode here. So what the bitmap is going to do is it's going to try to separate the whites and the blacks. And we're going to tell it to use, instead of alpha, we're going to tell it to use the luminance. And there you go. So what we need to do is just play with the channel. And you'll see that as we bring this down a little bit, the whites are kind of popping out and the blacks are going to go away right there. Okay, so let's. Okay, so now the, these are kind of isolated now, and we're going to take the output of the bitmap and put it into the image plane. And let's take a look at the media out now. All right, so you see now we only see the white images, and we're going to apply some effects to those. So let's take a background node and put it into the node area, and we're going to set this to maybe like a. Let's try an orange. We'll take the output of the render 3D and put it into the background node. And we'll disconnect this one, and then uh, we'll take these orange symbols and put them into the merge. And then we're gonna add a glow. So outside of the background, hit control space and search for glow. And this is gonna allow us to adjust some stuff here, put a little glow on it. And we're gonna set the color, we're gonna make it kind of a glow of red. And let's add one more glow. Sometimes multiple glows together kind of create a really cool effect. Yeah, that just adding that in there created a really interesting look. And these are kind of, kind of small and faded out back there. So let's go adjust our bitmap. And the other thing you'll notice is that the very center ring is not spinning because that's the original copy. The jitter only affects the first ring. So if you wanted to, we could come into this image plane and take this and we could actually move some of these and it gets really crazy. And we'll do some, actually let's, uh, the place to do that really would be this, uh, this transform here. Let's, let me reset that. Put that back, go into this transform. And then so we could adjust some of these rotations of the center ring as well. And you know, so the centering is now spinning around. If you want to make these a little bit bigger, one thing I experimented with doing was hitting the, the road dilate, hit control space and search for road dilate, put the bitmap in here, and then take this and put it into the image plane. <clears throat> and now what we can do is we, if we wanted this to be a little thicker, we can kind of bring it up and it's going to make our symbols a little bit, a little bit, a little bit thicker. See right there, we got the symbols there. We can kind of make them, make them a little bit thicker and they'll kind of show up and glow a little bit better. 
Okay, and just real quick, I want to show you another thing you can do with this. Um, you can take it, and as opposed to looking top down, you can kind of look on it from the side to look. So it's like, this is what I did when I had it kind of spinning around me a little bit. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the, uh, the duplicate here, and we're just going to take the number of copies and bring it down, because it changes this a little bit. And we're going to go to the bender, and you see the bender did its thing right here, like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to have it bend in a different direction. So we're going to change the angle to 90. And you'll na now you'll see it's kind of a ring that's wrapping around something. We can actually change this, have it kind of spin around here. I'm kind of adjusting the angle. But uh, let's, go, let's go to 90 right here on this angle. And now when we come into the, uh, the transform, we can actually have it spin around this way, spin around the Y direction, kind of a lot of things here. And then go back to our uh, duplicate and let's bring up the number of duplicates again. And they're kind of coming there. And we're going to change the scale back to, z to zero. So they're all kind of sitting on top of each other. In the transform, we're going to pull the Y down. And in the duplicate, what we're going to do is we're going to just change the Y offset. And they're kind of coming up like that. And you see, so now we have some rings. Then we, these rings could actually be spinning and going around something. So if we come into the, the transform and spin it like that. So just kind of a real quick, uh, real quick animation that we can do. Spinning these guys. There's lots of different options here. And then that's with our default animation that we had before with the spinning. The, uh, the the offsets are a little bit different, so you get some kind of different looks and different animations. Anyway, those are the spinning rings. There's a kind of interesting fact. Basically, it's all the bender node with the duplicate, and then maybe applying a few little effects here and there. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure that you like and subscribe for more videos about DaVinci Resolve Fusion, editing, and all kinds of great stuff. I will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.